Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. So I just installed iOS 26 on my iPhone. And as I mentioned in a previous video, it is a bit of a mess for low vision. But I do have good news. There are some new features of iOS 26 that actually work really well for low vision. I'm definitely gonna be talking about that, but I'm also gonna walk you through the steps on how to turn it from looking like this to something that's a little bit more low vision friendly like this. First things first, currently I am running the iOS 26 beta number two. This just released like two days ago and they've already improved some of the transparency issues that a lot of people were having. I think they realized that it was way too transparent and even people that were fully sighted were struggling to read some aspects of the phone. So they toned it down <laughs> and I'm happy for that, but it's still very, very difficult for low vision. Right now I have everything turned on as far as iOS 26 glory. I've got the clear icons, full transparency. I don't have any accessibility things turned on that would help with low vision because I wanted you guys to see kind of where we're starting from. And aside from accessibility tweaks, there's three areas that I want to focus on in this video. As you can see in the screen recording to my left, especially when you have the clear icons enabled, it is very difficult to see any of this stuff. Not only is everything very transparent, but it also takes out the colors so you don't get the benefit of color contrast. And specifically, your status icons here on the home screen, like the little red one or two that pops up whenever you've got a message waiting to be read. Well, here, when I'm running the clear white icons, everything is white, even those status indicators. So it makes it really difficult to see all of this stuff. Something else I want to quickly point out is that currently on the beta build, some of my widgets are completely whited out. Uh, this is a clock widget, a third-party clock widget, and then on this page, are my, my Google widget is completely whited out. That's clearly a bug. Probably these companies haven't updated their widgets yet to work with iOS 26. So I'm sure this will get corrected probably before the official public release of the operating system. One place that you really see the transparency is when you pull down your quick toggles or your quick panel here. And if I slide up, you'll see, you can see my icons underneath here, semi-transparent. So these are things visually that make it difficult for people with low vision because we don't want interference. We don't want anything interfering with what we're trying to see. So a semi-transparent blurry background, it's gonna make it hard for us to read the text on top of that or identify the icons on top of that. So generally that's what we turn off. Another place where that is super difficult is in your notification panel here. Once again, slightly blurry background and trying to read our notifications. This is better. Like I said, in the beta two release, they have improved this, but it's still really difficult to read. Another place I've noticed that has become more difficult to read is in messages. My outgoing messages, the green bubble with the white text, it's just much more difficult to read now. I don't know what they changed here. It's not semi-transparent. Maybe they changed the color and it's more of a light green, so it doesn't give enough contrast, but this is all really difficult to read as well. But once again, we're gonna fix most of this. Now, I mentioned in my previous video talking about iOS 26 that I was really looking forward to the new clock widget, the new lock screen clock widget. And I am really excited about this, but unfortunately, just like with everything on this new iOS build, we're gonna have to tweak it to make it work better for us. Okay, let's jump into the settings and we'll start making some adjustments that will help those of us with low vision. All right, first we're gonna jump into wallpaper because changing your wallpaper on your phone, on your computer, on your tablet. That's always the first thing I recommend people do because it can make a big impact. Currently, I have this kind of abstract blue wallpaper. It's something that maybe would come by default on your device. And it's fine, but it adds a lot of distraction in the background and not enough contrast. So what I recommend is setting your wallpaper to a solid color, or it doesn't even have to be a solid color. It could be some type of abstract, but the key is to make it simple. You don't want a cluttered wallpaper, a bunch of geometric shapes or swirls and all that. You want it very simple, maybe a gradient, something like that. 
and high contrast. For me personally, I just go old school and go a simple black background. It's maximum contrast, the least amount of distraction possible. Now, that's already much bigger for readability and recognizing icons, things like that. Having a pure black background actually works really, really well. Then even on our lock screen, it's immensely better on the lock screen. I can see that clock much, much bigger, that nice big new clock. I can see that a lot better. And speaking of lock screen, let's talk about that really quickly. There's a couple of things I wanna talk about customizing your lock screen to get the most out of this new giant clock. When you're in the lock screen customization page here, you tap on your clock, you get some options to customize that, including colors, changing the colors, changing the brightness of the colors, all of that. But down at the very bottom, we have a new option to do either a glass clock, the text, the font, or solid color. Glass is going to be semi-transparent. It's gonna be not much contrast. I, of course, recommend the solid option because that's gonna be the maximum contrast, but you can play around with this. See what looks better to you. One thing to note, though, if you want this big elongated clock, you need to choose the very first clock font option. Any of the other options, send it back to that very small, normal size clock. One way you can tell if you can adjust the clock is you'll see a little handle down in the bottom right corner of the outline around the clock. This lets you grab the clock and elongate it, stretch it out. That's as big as you can set it on this new lock screen. That's pretty big. I love that. It makes it a little bit difficult for me personally to recognize the numbers when they're stretched out that much. So I set it down a little bit. I like a nice big clock, but that was a little too big. <laughs> You can also adjust the text weight or how big the numbers are, how heavy the numbers are with that slider there. And once again, I mentioned colors. Play around with all of these colors. Find a good contrasting color that works well for you. Or maybe I'll try this kind of yellowish orange color or it's peach maybe, I don't know. My colors are terrible. <laughs> Okay, as I mentioned, with this black background, these icons, the clear white icons, they're, they're actually not too bad, but I really rely heavily on color contrast. For example, when I'm looking for my Facebook shortcut, I'm searching for a blue color. When I'm looking for YouTube, I'm searching for red. That helps me narrow down the options. So even though this kind of looks cool, I wanna switch back to getting those colors. Okay, there we go. I've set them back to colors and Incidentally, if you're not doing this already, just to the upper right in this window down at the bottom, customizing your icons, there's an option to set them to larger icons. What this does is it gets rid of the label, the icon, the shortcut labels, and allows the shortcut to get a little bit larger. I love this for me. Once again, I'm not reading those labels. I can't read the fact that it says YouTube or the fact that it says Facebook. I'm looking for those colors. So making the shortcut a little bit larger is awesome. Plus, I'm usually either opening an app with my voice and using Siri, or I have voiceover turned on. And the nice thing is that even without those labels, voiceover will read out the name of the app. Now that I have all the icons switched back to their normal look, I do wanna point out that my widgets are working again. The clock widget is there and my Google widget is there as well. So it's just in that clear icon mode that some of those widgets aren't working properly. Okay, let's jump into accessibility and we'll take a look at some changes we can make to make this more accessible for low vision. Now, obviously we can go in and bump up the text size, increase the size of the font. We can even go into the accessibility settings and increase the font size even more. We can turn on dark mode. We can do a lot of things in here that will help in just in general. But the two settings I want to adjust to get the most impact regarding this new transparent theme is reduce transparency and enabling high contrast. To get those, we need to go into display and text size and then scroll down a little bit to reduce transparency and increase contrast. They are right next to each other. And we're going to toggle these on one at a time and we'll go back and we'll kind of look at the effects they have. So first things first, if you remember our transparency within our quick panel and our notification panel. So if I pull down quick panel and slide up here, you can see this blurry background of the text on the page underneath here. And then if I pull down our notification page here, same thing, we have a slightly blurry background. So let's go ahead and toggle on reduce transparency. 
All right, and now let's pull those down again. And you see now that it has cut out that transparency. We have a black background increasing our contrast. Pull down our notification panel here, same thing. Now, just a heads up, even with reduced transparency on, if you have a busy background and you're running some of these transparent elements, like I've got the clear icons back on here, it's not really gonna affect that at all. These things are still gonna be difficult to see. But once again, if I pull down my quick panel here, we don't have our transparency in the background, which is good. But pulling down our notification panel here and looking at our notifications, the little notification windows are no longer transparent, which is great. But in between those notification panels, you can still see the background. So the background is still transparent. And then I want to definitely turn on the increased contrast. Now let's go back and see what changes that did. One area that it's helped is in our text messages, it's added more contrast in my message bubbles here. Also one thing you'll notice down at the bottom is we now have this outline, this higher contrast outline around the edges of the buttons and the text field. Here it is with that increased contrast turned off. The text message bubble here is much dif more difficult to read and we don't have that defining outline around the buttons at the bottom. Another feature of the iOS 26 is you get these specular highlights around elements on the screen. For example, your shortcut icons, they get this little highlight around the edge. And although some of these new shortcut designs are not great. We've lost a little bit of contrast because they're going for this layers of glass effect. Unfortunately, that means you lose contrast in those shortcuts. The settings shortcut, for example, there's a lot more gray in the background than it used to be. It used to have more, more black in the background. There used to be much more darker elements in the background of that icon. Now it just seems to be kind of gray and white, but you do see this nice outline around the shortcut. And I do kind of like that. If we pull down our notification panel again, now we have this outline around all the notification windows, which is great, adds a little separation, visual separation for us. That's always great. So that is it, guys. That is the best we can get with this new iOS 26 regarding how accessible it is for low vision. They've added some good things into this new build. Uh, once again, like the giant clock on the lock screen. And when high contrast is turned on, you've got the outline around certain elements on the screen. I do like that a lot as well. But overall, even with turning all these things on and tweaking it the best that we can, it's just not nearly as low vision friendly as it was in iOS 18. But I will reiterate that with the release of iOS 26 beta 2, they've improved some things. So hopefully they will continue to improve and continue to make it better, leading all the way up until the release in September. But that's it for this one, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And also while you're down there, I'm curious to know, have you installed iOS 26? And if you have what do you think how has your experience been so far thank you guys so much for watching if you'd like to learn more about myself or the blind life check out my website theblindlife.net there you will find links to all my other social media including the blind life podcast but that's it guys thank you so much again sam with the blind life i will see you next time